here. Oh, hello, you've caught me in between games. So, you know, I'm just chilling, just casually murdering some NPCs in Skyrim. That's what they're there for. How many times do I need to be run down by you on your moral high horse before you realize NPCs and their ragdoll physics imbued bodies are designed to be thrown about, sliced, diced, shouted at, and eaten by dragons. Look, feeling sorry for video game NPCs is like feeling sorry for the pins when you go bowling. Screw the pins, send them flying. They're fulfilling their destiny. They won't mind. Although I guess it must be pretty annoying to constantly get knocked down, reset, knocked down, reset. Knocked down. Here are seven things video game NPCs are really sick and tired of. Number one, yes, being murdered. Any NPCs in any of the games I play are no doubt especially frustrated by this, seeing as how I'm one of those players who can't help but think of inventive ways to send them hurtling through the virtual ether, ready to respawn when I next load a save. In Grand Theft Auto San Andreas, I like to tow NPCs all the way up Mount Chiliad and then drive off the top. In The Witcher 3, I like running them down with my horse. In Vampire, I like sucking all the nutritious life juice out their necks. In Skyrim, oh, in Skyrim, I'm truly awful to NPCs, I'll admit. But look how they die. Listen to how they die. If you don't want to die, NPCs, then don't be so funny when you do. But yeah, NPCs must get sick to death of this, going about their pre-programmed business of making the worlds they inhabit seem dense and alive for the benefit of entitled protagonists, only for those protagonists to come along and try out that new move they just unlocked, you know, just because. What do you think you're doing? Sorry. Not sorry. Entry 2. Now, I'd get sick and tired of this if I was an NPC. Is when they get spoken to again, and again, and again, and again, by protagonists that are for some reason convinced they have more to say than just that one line about the weather. Yes. Hello. Yes. Hello. If you're talking to someone in a video game and they're offering just the one line over and over and over, that's NPC for bugger off and leave me alone. NPCs do not want to be asked if they know where the nearest trader is, especially if they've already told you they don't bloody well know. They're sick of being asked what they think about whatever war is going on 32 times, just because you've forgotten you've already spoken to them. You can see it, can't you? The dead hollow behind the eyes as they have the same conversation yet again with a protagonist who can't help but scratch that completionist itch that arises when he or she is unsure whether or not they've extracted every line of available dialogue from a place. They're screaming for release. They don't want to talk to you. Leave them be. Unless it's Nazim. Nazim from Whiterun. Nazim who absolutely loves repeating his one line of dialogue over and over and over again, often unsolicited, just to annoy you. Do you get to the Cloud District very often? Oh, what am I saying? Of course you don't. Fuss row die, Nazim. We're going right to the other end of the scale for entry number three, and this is something that must cut NPCs real deep, and that's when you skip all their dialogue because you, the self-important protagonist, have got better things to be doing, haven't you? Take this poor bloke in the war-ravaged land of Velen from The Witcher 3. Finally, a hero hath come to lift our weary souls from the gutter, to offer the chance of a better tomorrow. He's coming. Oh, he's coming to speak to me. Maybe he can help. Maybe... Uh, would you search... How much will you give me if I find your horse? It's cruel, isn't it? But when you know you can't be bothered with whatever side quest they're peddling. They're like desperate contestants on a reality TV show where you have to pitch your side quest idea to a panel of bored main characters. <laughs> Hello. 
What's your name? My name is Bill Thorogood, sheep farmer extra- And uh, what do you make of the political situation in Novgorod? Well, times are hard for us sheep farmers ever since- so, um, what side quest are you hoping we're going to run for you today? My prey sheep Fluffy has been missing since I returned from picking flowers. <sighs> Fluffy. The fourth entry on our list of things video game NPCs are really sick and tired of is when their houses get ransacked, often while they're sitting in them. Take the start of Final Fantasy IX, for example. Imagine you live in the Kingdom of Alexandria. You're all excited because today is a big story event and you might get to go to the castle and do something different for a change, when all of a sudden, some little wizardy burk comes barreling in and nicks all your savings. Honestly, Final Fantasy IX, what the hell? Why can't that just say Nine Gill? Why does it also have to say Grandma's Savings? What are you trying to do to me? This kind of thing is so prevalent, it's just an accepted part of the language of video games. Is it in a pot or a chest? Is it sparkly? Then it's yours. Don't worry about it being in someone else's house. They won't mind. I expect they will. I mean, you would, wouldn't you? Big gluttonous item vacuums, sucking up everything in their path, even though 99% of the time, they won't even flip and use the items they're swiping. Which leads us neatly onto entry number five. When NPCs, especially shopkeeping NPCs, are forced to buy whatever rubbish you want to sell. Nothing to see here, just a spoiled protagonist going through their inventory, checking all the nonsense they've picked up, stolen or sliced off an enemy, shoving it into the hands of a bewildered NPC, and then asking for thousands of gold for it. Hey, shop guy! Ah, traveller, might you be able to help me I've with my I've got a bunch of stuff I need to offload because otherwise okay. I'm going to get over encumbered. All right. this stuff here is like really vulnerable to fire. And okay, it's like I've got well, no use for flammable clothing because I'm about to go on a mission where I've got to fight a it, dragon. It doesn't so sound like a wise purchase, but if you don't need it, then clothing. that hat is no good against fire at all. But I must talk this to you about my sheep. finger. I right. cut this finger off a bandit. And I don't picked it up. Why would I pick up the finger? I don't you deal in fingers. For, if you try Here's Nathan's like a parrot emporium, like, of, I don't even know where that right. came from. Just pick that up somewhere. Dead animals aren't really this my forte. This is utterly pointless. Why did I pick this up? Just I saw it and I just couldn't help myself. Yeah. Stupid me well, going what? along my little fingers. I'll just pick Why it would up. I buy that then? Whatever. Pick it but, up. Okay, well, anyway, I'll figure something out. Anyway, we don't out. even play badminton in Novgorod. No. Why did I pick that up? Anyway, yeah. there you go. Right, well, I'm going to struggle Maybe to sell that for if that. no one plays it. Here's a. This is a good axe, to be fair. Yeah. I don't play with axes. I've got an axe. I just thought it looked nice, but it's taking up inventory space now. I've already so got an axe. Maybe 150 for that one, I reckon. Well, that's dear, isn't it? This is we good. We could talk about to it. To be fair. I was saying about my sheep, though. Maybe 150 I don't deal for that in one, weapons. at least. I don't deal in weapons, though. This is though. the creme de la creme, though. That's like, another weapon. That is good, isn't it? It's great. Look at that thing. I don't you think I can afford that. You a giant's that. head off with that. I wouldn't. 500 just, gold, mate. Just a fire I just haven't got enough space for it at yeah, the moment. But, well, I'll hold it for now, but I'm not going to actually probably buy that. And I'm never going to eat that. Well, I will eat that. Should we say 20,000 gold, mate? Well, thanks, thanks very much. Talk. See you later. Can you help me with my lost sheep, though? Entry number six. Now, on the off chance an NPC has successfully given you a side quest, another thing they must be utterly sick to death of is when you just ignore said side quest for hours and hours and hours at a time, and they're just left standing about, unable to continue their lives, the item, weapon or family member for which they're pining, left forgotten at the bottom of a side quest backlog you can no longer be bothered to look through. There's a character called Morgan in Nino Kuni 2. She works at the bazaar in Evermore, and she asked me for a pair of smelly boots about 35 hours ago. I've saved the world since she asked me for those smelly boots, invested heavily in my kingdom's magical research, recruited loads more citizens, upgraded my castle, defeated the boss at the end of the 10th Dreamer's Maze, earned the platinum trophy for goodness sake, and Morgan still doesn't have that pair of smelly boots she wanted. And she never will. Our final entry is something that really must grate with NPCs, and that is, they do the same thing day in, day out, forever. While old Jimmy main character saunters in a level one nobody, 
and ends up a clad in elven armor champion of the world big shot just because, you know, they're the protagonist. Imagine you're the blacksmith in Riverwood in Skyrim. One day, a bedraggled POW escapee shuffles into town and you teach the ungrateful sod how to craft some basic armor. Hello, I've just escaped from the Imperials and a dragon attack. I don't have any money and the only clothes I have are these leather pants I stole from a corpse roasted by dragon fire. Hello there, level one escapee. I'm the blacksmith of Riverwood. And and a few weeks later... Hello! I'm the Dragonborn, the champion of Skyrim, Thane of Whiterun, leader of the Stormcloak Rebellion, and conqueror of Alduin the World Eater. Yeah, I'm still the blacksmith, mate. Talk about a glass ceiling. If you're an NPC, you've just got no career prospects whatsoever and are doomed to spend the rest of your days watching decorated protagonists gallivanting about the place thinking they're all that. God, it must make them sick. And so there we are, seven things video game NPCs are really sick and tired of. Mainly us, to be honest. Let us know in the comments if you can think of any other examples. Give us a like if you enjoyed the video, and join us again next week for another Friday feature. Thanks for watching.